Oh, but, but those days name is very important because it's your identity for for your career, if not your life. You know, it's uh, it's how you come to be known, how you introduce yourself. So it's very important to pick an identity which will eventually become your brand as well. You're building a character, you're building your image. What, it, what you're gonna be saying in your writings does need to connect to who you are, you know? Uh, Genghis Khan, some of the dopest cats, you know, they're hard, they've got really, like the name says it before you've even heard what the cat has to say or even before he's even sliced you off. So I think it is important to have a name that's like, you know, not just, I mean, if it was something you could see, it'd be eye-catching, but something that, you know, makes people pay attention to you. I think it's very important because the first thing when people hear about you, obviously we're gonna ask who that is. And I mean, besides even the stage name, it's all about the name, you know. I mean, a person in general, a name defines that person, you know what I mean? It's like, it's it's you, that's who you are, it's your unique code. So I feel that your name defines who you are before people actually get to know you, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's very, very important, it's vital. I, I think that defines you. I mean, it's going to define your brand, it defines your artistry. You know, you, you need to be very careful about um, the name you put out there. You know, you don't want to be like a, okay, let me not throw shots, but you don't like want to be like charger. You don't want to be like charger, you know? And then like some other new technology comes through and then like, you know what I'm saying? So it, there's a lot of thought that has to be put into it in terms of branding, what that can go in. I mean, you can't like swear on your name. I know a few people would like, and I'm just like, you will never, you'll always be underground because you've got that name, you know? The sh and the f like, yeah, so it definitely defines who you are and it'll define your arts. And I mean, it, it has to blend into everything else you're doing. Stage name, high school thing, we're all coming up with nicknames, deciphering at break time, everyone's calling themselves this, that. I went from a range of names. I started as steak. You know, because uh, of they were hot, T, T bone, T bone steak, then eventually just steak. Then it became like tentative, and I went through everything. Then I, I eventually settled on proverb because it uh, encompassed what I wanted my sound to be about. You know, as you know, proverb is a short saying statement the truth, and I wanted my sound style message to be all about the truth. Well, Shazli Yipi came about in studio, like nicknames, you know how they come about, it's just a play around thing. And then it was like Charmaine. Cut off shares. Okay, that's that was my first nickname. Then the guys were like, nah, 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 it's too plain, it's too plain. And then we got we did the shoot where the guys claimed that I looked all hippie like. And though we put all that together and eventually the hippie thing came about. And then we had the whole Shazzy hippie vibes. Okay, the name Fifi Cooper is my nicknames. Fifi comes from Rifilo, my original name that I got, Kohaye. And then Koopa is my high school nickname. I didn't mean Koopa Ditena. They said I'm Koopa because I was short in high school. I was the shortest good class in. So that's how Fifi Koopa came about. Gigi Lemain, my full name is Genesis Gabriella Tina Manny. My mom is Zulu, my dad's colored. So I basically took the G from Genesis and the G from Gabriella, and that was the G squared, GG. And then Lermain, Lermain, I was obsessed with a lot of French literature. Um, uh, and so I took the LA from Gabriella, the last LA, and then my surname Manny, and then I just squabbled it around, and it, it was Lermain, Gigi Lermain. As Tumi Mulekane likes to say, Gigi Lermain, yeah. That's where Gigi came from. Okay, rouge, um, obviously it's, it's French, it means red, and um, it's just a color that represents so much. I mean, it's, it's in your face, it's bright, it means danger, it means love, and I feel that it's all those things that I instill in myself. So I just felt it was the perfect name to fit me, and it was simple and easy enough to write and read. <laughs> So yeah. How I got it has got nothing to do with what it represents. <laughs> um, look, I mean, at the time, uh, I'm sure a lot of people who actually know my history know that I was in finance um, before I actually got into full-time DJing. So at the time, I wanted to separate the two. I wanted to separate who Noni was, who was the, the finance graduate who was working in a bank, who was doing the usual nine to five boring jobs, um, and separate who I was as a DJ. So. I was looking for a bit of an alias. I wasn't really sure what to go with. Um, having a chat with a couple of my friends. So I went out for drinks with my friend, DJ Dimples. 
And then he was just like, after one or two Cosmopolitans, three or four Cosmopolitans, he was like, well, that's where it's at. And he tweeted it. And I was like, no, don't do that because then people are going to jump on it. And then the wrong person saw it. VG saw it and he retweeted it. He was like, yes, we're running with that one. So I kind of took it out and I was like, you know what, maybe there's some way that I could embrace it. So I looked into the word and then I just figured, okay, well, I can't be DJ Cosmo because then people are still going to consider me as maybe they might confuse me and think I'm a guy. So that's why I added the Miz next to it and now it's Miss Cosmo. Um, but how it makes sense to me is that I'm a cosmopolitan girl. I live in a cosmopolitan city and I play urban cosmopolitan music and it just encompasses everything that I am. So I ran with that. When I first came out, I was going under the name Lee L, which is short for my full name, uh, Ashley Lafoy. And then a couple of months later, in 2005, I became Lexicon and that was born out of my love for words. I mean, I've been a writer from when I started writing. And when I came across this word lexicon, for me, it embodied that passion because lexicon means your vocabulary or your collection of words. And when I discovered this word, I, I immediately resonated with it. So I took on the name lexicon from 2005 till early 2013. And then it was Feb. Feb 2013 that I took on the name Lex Lafoy. So Lex is a derivative or a crop version of Lexicon and then Lafoy is my maternal surname. Uh, the stage name is Zagwe, also it's Bongo Samu Zagwe, so Dogozo Waga Zagwe is Bongo. Yeah, so gasha gasha nza cool available places in this one was ago. So in the end, I guess subconsciously in Japan, but in a corner man get like hip hop and about the battle in Japan, this one was ago. Yeah, man. Yeah, I find it means it's not the same. Ah, ye find it. It is not the same. Yes, that's what I find it means. Uh, it comes from Zaifani. You know that that was my grandfather's name which I inherited after him. I say inherited because that's exactly what I did. You know, it's not a name that was given to me at birth. It's a name after he passed away growing up with Umam Tembu. I felt like, Umam Tembu, you don't have to worry. You know, I got you. From now on, you're with me. You know, Dimum Zaifan. You know, you, you were with him Zaifan until death do you part. Death came, now you have me. Petty Monroe. Monroe comes from Marilyn Monroe, that old Scarlet Vintage vibe. Like I just have a connection there some way, somehow. And Patty was the first nickname I ever had. So one day in class, this guy was just like, oh, Patty Monroe, because he knew I loved Monroe so much, and that was my nickname when he put the two together, and I was like, whoa, write that down. We're keeping that. I actually tried to look for a name that fitted who I thought I was, you know? Um, Black Rock came fir first. I, I'd, you know, been mayhem before. And when I thought of Black Rock at the time, maybe 2004, 2003, I thought, yo, man, it's solid, black, I'm hard, yo, I'm killing it, you know, delusions and whatnot. But I stuck with it for a while, and then um, I read this book, Man, Woman, Nature, and there they describe the state of Yugen in like Eastern philosophy and stuff, you know, not being obvious, seeing, you know, almost through dimmed eyes a little bit, you know, seeing what's not obvious, seeing what's in between, what is there. And I figured since I'm so caught up as well, not only in the reality that we're in, and also maybe different ones that are coexisting, I figured it fitted, you know, so I went to the Cuban Black Rock.